Uh, my name is Sergey Drachev. I run a vlog and a trucking channel, heavyhold.tv. And this video is for people that are thinking about upgrading their equipment, their camera. Uh, first of all, who is this video not for? Uh, if you're a rich kid and your daddy or mama gave you $10,000 and you can buy pretty much any camera you want, this video is not for you. Please go and boil an egg or something. Uh, if you're a trucker from my main channel and you're not interested in photography or video and you're not sure how you ended up here, um, I suggest you go to the nearest uh, shooting range and ask to shoot a 50 cal. Okay, now that we have uh, rich kids boiling eggs and the truck is shoot, shooting 50 cal, let's talk about the best camera for a YouTuber who does vlogs but also does uh, filming like outside of the studio uh, where you all by yourself and you have you don't have a lot of time you cannot stage uh, your shots um, and that's what I do right I I, uh, I feel myself with uh, with a camera and this is this is this camera right now I'm dealing right now I'm shooting with my smartphone but until recently uh, I basically had uh, three cameras so Nikon D5500 that I mostly used for uh, photography and then I used um, sorry it's getting bright and then I used uh, uh, GoPro Hero Basic and also this LG G4 uh, smartphone where, which one which actually can uh, shoot pretty amazing video from 720p all the way to 4k um, so I do kind of what they what's known in Hollywood as a run and gun a run and gun style of shooting and so this that's who this video is for so if you do this you're running around you're not always in your office or room or your neighbor's office so and you don't have much time and you're all by yourself um, then that's the that's my recommendation and basically yeah, until recently I had Nikon D5500 a great photo camera and I've been using GoPro basic and I tried different models and I've been using my uh, phone and I was not happy with any of these so I sat down and I wrote a list of what I want like ideally um, from a video camera from a, uh, something that will allow to do my something that would allow me to do my job easier and make videos uh, you know more entertaining uh, for viewers so number one uh, thing I want is autofocus I don't care what other people that have that lock 3 Canon 5D Mark 3's say or write or, or show on blogs I want a reliable and uh, accurate autofocus the same type or better that uh, you find in camcorders and some point-and-shoot cameras right um, when I'm in the studio or like you know like now I'm in my truck right okay I can I can set manual focus but when I'm shooting something that moves you know this is 21st century come on you know my smartphone has a tracking autofocus you know so it's it's not that much to ask I want reliable autofocus and that's why my Nikon D5500 was really uh, lacking because okay the autofocus is okay for um, for photography but as soon as you switch to video like live view mode it's like awful it's not you know it's even if you sit in front of the camera like this at a constant distance it keeps zooming in and out in and out I tried that so like Nike and DSLRs are you know even even I had I, I tried DA10 D750 they all suck pretty much at shooting video okay so number one I want as a, a run-and-gun filmmaker is reliable and accurate autofocus that can track continuously a subject when filming video number two 
I want a flip out screen. Like this smartphone I'm shooting with now, it doesn't have a flip out screen, but I can see myself because I've, I use that flip thing, that, that the option where you can, it gives you a lower resolution, but it's very important to be able to see yourself, you know, like how are you framed? Are you, are you like this or are you like, like when I'm shooting with a GoPro, and before that actually I had a flip phone, that was the first video I did with the Flip HD. A great camera, but there's no way to 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 tell, you know, if you if you're higher or lower than the normal. And some of my, of my videos were shot like this, you know, or maybe like this, where I'm talking and you cannot see my mouth, you know. So it's really important to have a flip out screen. Um, number three. Uh, after I, I, I did quite a few videos, I realized the importance of audio. So I want a port, a 3.5 millimeter port for an external mic. And GoPros, they don't have this. Uh, like I and I didn't want to. I don't want to spend $500 for a more expensive model that does. But even the more expensive model, they don't give you a 3.5 millimeter uh, port. You still have to use an adapter, and then it's like a flimsy concoction. It's not reliable, I tried it, I don't like it. So autofocus, flip out screen, external mic, and number four, and these are all like the most important things because I wrote down 10, but I'm like seeing, seeing here, I marked with an asterisk, like seven most important. So number four is image stabilization. And that's what you don't have on the GoPro. So you have to get, get like a gimbal or, or um, one of those steady cams, you know, and that's that's too much um, uh, the DSLR uh, you can get it's all in the lens right like none of the DSLRs I know have a have a built-in stabilization in the camera it's all in the lens and especially when you deal with the crop sensor camera like my Nikon 5500 uh, you really want to use quality glass quality lenses because few people know about this but when you look at the lens you actually have to multiply the aperture number by your factor number, like 1.5 for Nikons, 1.6 for Canons. So if you're buying a cheap lens, the, the, the one that has image stabilization, let's, and you'll see typical numbers like 3.5 to 5.6 uh, aperture. On my Nikon, that's actually like more 5.6 to 8.5, you know? So you're losing lots of light, and that's why your, your pictures... Uh, don't look so good you know so you need to use quality glass maybe maximum up to 2.8 aperture or like I I had a Sigma 18 to 35 f 1.8 but these lenses are like prime lenses they don't have stabilization and that's a real big problem when you're trying to run and gun right doesn't work image stabilization is very important now um, okay I'm gonna omit something here but next one that I often miss with uh, with the GoPro is I want to have the ability to zoom, you know, because something's happening too far for the GoPro to uh, to to catch, and you know, like I'm trying to catch some action, or let's say I'm shooting that dozer or excavator I'm loading, and I want to show the operator, I want to show his face, well, how he or she is, you know, focused on operating the machine. I cannot do this. I have to come close and that's not possible unless you want to get crashed, you know. So I really want to have a zoom, optical zoom, with so with a lens with optical zoom and stabilization and I, I don't have time to change lenses, right? Uh, one more uh, very important thing is a tripod mount. So as you saw, I'm using um, this little concoction on my smartphone because it's mounted to a mini tripod, Manfrotto, and over here you have to use something like this, like another adapter, which is not very convenient. Uh, but a tripod mount is great because you can also use it with something like this. That's the best 20 bucks I ever spent at a B&H uh, photo video store. This thing, I can hook it up to, to pretty much anything on my trailer or in, even inside the truck, you know, and this uh, adjust in many different directions but again you see you need the tripod mount right so this works great with uh, semi heavy even cameras probably up to like two pounds I'm gonna use it with uh, with this new camera I'm gonna talk about shortly uh, too 
Uh, and then also for me what's important for me is a gun and run a run and gun <laughs> uh, vlogger youtuber filmmaker is I don't want a camera that's too heavy let's say Canon 5D Mark III too heavy uh, Nikon 5500 was great but then you need to use a quality glass quality lens that Sigma was two pounds too heavy uh, so I want something light and uh, some other things like not so important, but it's nice to have a touch screen, you know, because you can uh, go faster through menus and settings on your camera. You can, you know, change aperture, ISO and stuff like that, just the poking at the screen. But also uh, most uh, touch screen equipped cameras allow you to focus by touching a spot on the on the screen. And that's important when, you know, your autofocus doesn't work, right? Some, you know, challenging conditions you can, let's say, when I'm doing any kind of like a self interview like this, I can just point on my face and uh, make sure that it's focused and then switch to me maybe uh, AF uh, dash S single servo focus so that it doesn't zoom in and out. So very nice touch screen, very nice. And, but that's like not too important, but still great. And then of course I wanna, I wanna be able to shoot an MP4 so that it's easier to deal with on the computer. Uh, 720p that's what I mostly upload my movies in but sometimes 1080p or now more and more people shoot in 4k so that will be a plus and battery life is somewhat important I don't want to carry 20 batteries with me uh, but because you know most videos are you know how long do you want to make your videos you know 10 15 minutes like this one gonna this one gonna be probably long because I still haven't talked about the camera that I found that meets all these criteria uh, and so once again, autofocus, flip out screen, external mic capability, image stabilization, uh, touch screen, one lens with good optical zoom, uh, tripod mount, uh, lightweight, MP4 format, 720p, 1080p, 4K, and good battery life. And so I've been looking, oh, by the way, and so when you do this research, it's very important to look at the date when you know let's say you're watching a video on youtube and the guy gives like categoric recommendations don't buy this buy this always look at the date and i was searching and just like type in like a stupid phrase which camera should i buy i thought there would be like million results but actually there was one result from a photographer i i watch and respect tony northrop he does uh, quite a few you know good reviews and he's a very thorough you know guy and he did a video, which camera should I buy, where he goes by, by um, based on your budget. And he mostly talks about photography, uh, photo cameras. But then in the end, there's a section, he says, people often ask us which camera to buy for video, right? And he gives you like five cameras, again, based on your budget. And number two was this one that I just got. Because number one, uh, it was Sony Alpha 5100. I look at the specs that's like the cheapest out of these five that Rick he recommended it didn't have a port for the external mic no good for me number two was this uh, Panasonic DMC FZ or FZ 300 right I look at this one I like this one that's what I bought number three he recommended was again prices are going higher and higher number three was Panasonic G7 and then GH4 and he said if you have unlimited budget probably for those rich kids that are now boiling eggs he says get a Sony a7 II right that's a full frame camera but this one this one has pretty much everything that I talked about on this list and I think this is the best cam for you know run a gun style of shooting for vloggers and and uh, filmmakers so has autofocus and as most school children now know for reliable autofocus in video you need a combination of phase and contrast autofocus and that's where Nikon basically sucks big time because all their autofocus is just contrast which is okay for photography but no good for video so like Canon is excellent in this regard like Canon 70D, 80D, 80D the new one or 7 D Mark II, they have their new dual pixel um, 
AF, which is a combination of phase and contrast and work amazing. And actually, I was thinking about going with uh, maybe, you know, getting saving money and getting Canon 80D. But the weight is the problem and, uh, and the price. Like, this is much cheaper and much lighter, you know. And even, sh oh, and that one, I don't think that one shoots 4K. But this one even shoots 4K, right? Anyway, so autofocus is amazing on this one. F like, much better than, like, a camcorder. You can choose a single, a single continuous, uh, like it's no comparison to my Nikon D5500 that I got rid of. Like this one, you really can shoot video and we're gonna do a test on a separate video. I'm gonna do like a 4K uh, test. Flip out screen, yes sir. Flip out and you can do like this. So very good to, you know, film yourself. Uh, external mic. Again, big yes sir, over here on the left side has a connector, right? And you plug in your mic in here, let's say a Rode, you know, Video Mic Pro, that's the port. Uh, image stabilization, yes, both for uh, photography and video, like a multi-axle stabilization. Again, we're gonna test it, I'm gonna do like, I'm gonna put it on this tripod and just do a short, uh, like one minute 4K video and we'll see how it works. Uh, touch screen, yes, it has a touch screen. So again, it has that capability where you can point on on uh, something on the screen and it'll focus, you know. But also, of course, it's great for using the menu and stuff like that. Uh, good zoom, optical zoom. It has a 25 to 600 mil lens, and most importantly, it's a fixed 2.8 aperture. So it, aperture does not change when you zoom in and zoom out. So, I don't know, this is like, to get a range like this uh, on a set Canon 80D, you would need at least three lenses, right? Like, uh, I don't know, 24 to 105 and then maybe 70 to 200 and then, I don't know, 200 to 500. That was on the Nikon. I don't think on, on Canon, on Canon they have like, what, up to 400, I think. But it'll be super heavy, super expensive and... I don't think I would be able to afford 2.8 lens because that's what this is, 2.8, right? Uh, so again, a winner compared to a Canon DSLR. So tripod mount, of course, there's a tripod mount. And not too heavy, this weighs, uh, I think like 680 grams, just under two pounds. Uh, but this is already with the lens, right? So DSLR, like a good DSLR will be two pounds by itself. Like my Nikon D5500 was uh, very light, that's why I liked it. It was even less than one pound without the lens, but then I, I added that Sigma and it became three pounds with the camera and the lens, right? So this is a very good grip. I like it, you know, deep and you have a whole bunch of controls everywhere. I don't know. It, image, uh, it has a compensation over here. You have a, this switch over here. You can you see uh, that's the focus focus modes over here you have white balance over there you have ISO and then you know you flip that and then just use the touch screen to change it I don't know I like it so far and mp4 yeah 720p yes 1080 up to 60 frames per second uh, and 4k and battery life is not too good but not too bad so it's fine for what I'm doing so I think for me uh, this is the perfect camera and uh, uh, I didn't want to read the manual, actually it comes with two manuals, no, like there's one printed manual in the box, it says basic, if you want advanced, you have to go online and download it, so I downloaded, I found both online because they're easier to read uh, on the screen, you know, and on the computer as PDF, and the basic one is pretty much useless, and so I watched a couple of videos online, uh, the guy says, how to start shooting YouTube movies with your, you know, Panasonic FZ300 in under three minutes. And the first advice he gives you is this, he tells you to uh, change the settings on this main dial and switch to creative video mode. And, and then he shows you like how his daughter is uh, filming herself sitting in an office. And what he's not telling you is that, you know, I did that and then I was just, you know, trying to see if it was tracking, if it had like a tracking focus. I was sitting inside McDonald's and just moving the camera, uh, trying to see if it'll, you know, focus and nothing was in focus. What the heck? I I, I I checked this over here. Yes, it was an AF-C continuous. 
and in the menu it says uh, continuing like in the menu you can look up over here when you press this button here right you go in the menu on the screen and continuing autofocus was on so I couldn't understand what was going on right so the guy says you can shoot in under three minutes what he's not telling you is that if you look in the advanced uh, manual for this camera it's telling you that as soon as you switch to creative uh, video mode the camera will automatically switch to AF dash uh, S single and that's why in that video he shows how his daughter just basically turns the camera towards herself like this and then she points on her face and she makes the camera uh, you know focus on her face so that's fine when you're shooting yourself inside right and you're the distance from you to the camera does not change but you should not tell people that's that's the way to shoot a YouTube video you know because you're not telling them that that with this setup they cannot run around and shoot let's say birds or trucks or whatever right so so what I do and what I learned is that to start shooting and that's I think that's the best idea when you're just learning a new camera just first do everything in full auto so there's this mode here that's uh intelligent auto so if you use the panasonic camcorders before like i did i'm familiar with this but on this camera they have two types they have intelligent auto and intelligent auto plus and i switch into that one and then i flip the switch to c right well it was like that and that's it i didn't have to do anything else uh Plus is better than a regular uh, intelligent auto because with the plus you can use the exposure compensation and you can use the white balance. So you can basically, you know, adjust it until you see the picture on the screen the way you want it. You know, exposure and white balance, and that's all you need, right? And you already have autofocus, and that's that's the quick way to start shooting a YouTube video. So full auto, intelligent auto plus. Uh, and I think I uh, one thing I changed was there's a way to uh, make your picture a bit more like vivid both for photography and video I think it's called the uh, expressive or something like that but basically it makes the color stand out a little bit but other than that I'm just using full auto and that's why I'm saying that after looking at my uh, expectations and looking at this camera at the specs that's why I'm saying that this, in my opinion, is the best camera for run and gun YouTuber, vlogger like me. Thanks for watching.